Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on the 2015 Auto Sleeper Horton. So as we walk around the vehicle, the first point you get to is your fresh water intake, which opens with the water key there. So this is where you'd go and buy your hose pipe, put your hose pipe in there until it overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water. But there is two ways you can fill the water on this vehicle, so you can fill it via a hose pipe. Or should you not be able to get access to a hose pipe, you can fill it via a wheel submersible pump which goes in there and you drop that into a bucket or an aqua roll and fill via the wheel submersible pump. Next week you've got your LPG, so this is with it being a 25 litre underslung tank you'd fill from here so it's a bane it's fitting, you turn the front of the gun Pull the trigger up and press the button on the fuel filler display at the forecourt and wait until it is full. These normally take between 15 and 20 pounds to fill. And just underneath your water filler via the pump, you've got your water drain. So should you've taken on any contaminated water or you drain it down for the winter to stop the water from freezing on board when not using it, you just turn here and drop your water off. So that's fresh water, clean water. You've got your max view external tally point here so if you're on a super site get yourself some quacks and connect in here and then that'll run the tally on board without using the aerial on the top of the motorhome should you be in a hard place to find a signal but your trim vent here so just allow this just allows all the, the nasties from the boiler and the fumes out and then here you put your mains connectivity point so you get your hookup lead lift the collar slide that over there and connect and then to unhook press the blue lever down and unhook the vehicle but when hooking the vehicle up always hook the vehicle up first then walk to your power source and obviously do it in reverse when you're unhooking the top here so this is your toilet system so you do have this, so it's like a caravan styled here so this is a separate reservoir for your flush so your system so you'd fill with pink and some water in here and this is your flush liquid and then below you've got your cassette so if you make sure the blade's closed lift the orange handle and slide it out and then to empty you take the cap off press the button hold it at 90 degrees and empty at your chemical waste disposal point which is normally behind or beside your toilet block on site once you've emptied it you put some water in via this via the spout give it a rinse and empty again and then if you're using the liquid, you need a cap full of liquid into here with some water. Or if you're using the tablet form, which is a newer form nowadays, open the blade hatch, put some water in, a pint of water, and then drop the tablet into the toilet. Clicking it back in means it is locked in place. Come round to the back of the vehicle, you've got your reversing camera above your high level brake lights. And then you put your tow bar with seven pin electrics on there and your bumper bar so it just protects the back panel of the vehicle. You also notice you've got corner studies on here. So there's a, there's a handle just inside the habitation. You get your handle here. Pop that through onto the winder there. And then you can wind your legs down for a bit more stability. But obviously make sure these are wound up before you leave sight. So that handle is just kept inside the door. Your electric step, which button's just here, so it's a little push button, it puts the step out, and that'll automatically be retracted when locked and when the vehicle is started. Put your all in light, the all in your fridge vents, a outside three pin plug on mains electric only for when the, you're out in the awning. And you do have your external gas point so you get a gas
spigot and a hose and so jubilee clips with a rubber hose connect it there and then turn on and off here and this will power your kadak or your external barbecue from the underslung tank without carrying a spare bottle and then obviously using your keys your various round-headed keys one does the toilet one does the door and one does the lockers push in got some storage underneath here and there are your carpets so you've got some storage for your bits and pieces underneath your long bench seat inside and then the west alloy key which is a square key opens this section here and you can store in there so that's more for hookup blades leveling ramps things that are going to get wet it's more of a wet locker At the passenger door you've got your diesel filler so simply open the passenger door open the flap and then open the cap and this is where you'd fill with fuel diesel so in here obviously your main engine battery lives underneath the floor on a mercedes sprinter your bonnet releases here and then this cap cap here this little toggle which lifts that off and that's all the fuses for the merc sprinter side and then if we just have a quick look underneath the bonnet. So you just push that back, no need for a stay. So as long as it's pushed in like so, it will keep the bonnet up. And you've got your various liquids. So you've got your brake fluid, your coolant. If you push this pole in here, this is your positive pole. So you're, uh, you're positive for giving a jump start. And then your negative would be off the wing here. So your earth just off there. And then you've got your engine oil filler. Obviously your screen wash. And your dipstick which is just hidden down the back here. So once inside the vehicle, beside the habitation door you have your main 12 volt control panel. If you're hooked up you'll get a little symbol here. To say that you're hooked up and you're on mains 240 volt. And to turn the panel on and off, put your on button here. So this will either give you 12 volt if you're not hooked up or 240 volt if you are. Then next week you have your pump. So should you have enough water in the tank, you can turn the pump on. And this will prime and pressurize all the taps, toilets and shower. And then next week you've got the main light switch. So this is the master switch for all the lights. Then they all are individually switched around the vehicle. And at the bottom here, in the far left you've got your owner light which is a light above the habitation door. You've got your dimmable light so this switch next to it dims the light underneath here. It's a light dimmer. And then you've, you've got your two batteries here so this is your power transfer button so should your leisure battery die you can swap the battery over the vehicle battery but I wouldn't advise this because you can Drain the Mercedes carb battery and then you will be getting nowhere because the engine won't start. And then finally, you've got your tank heaters here. So the, the tanks have got probes in and put a current of, current of electric through the water. When it's going to freeze on a night, put these on and it will stop the water from freezing. Feeling to do so may freeze the water in the tank and you'll struggle to get water through for your taps, toilet and shower. And you've got arrows here so you can scroll through the panel. So you start for the auto sleeper logo, then you go down. And this shows you your vehicle and your leisure battery reading on the far left. And then shows you your fresh water 25% and your waste water 25%. So it's shown there that that's going in the red. So it's telling you to top the water up. Going further down, you do have your vehicle battery volts, your solar panel and your ampage coming off the battery. And I've got time settings and then you can obviously displays the time on the main control panel. So in the kitchen area, you've got three lit gas rings. And then this one controls this one which is an electric hot plate and only works on 240 volt so 
so you get the light on there when that's working. Obviously if you've had any of these on, allow it to cool before you put the cooker hood down because if it is warm you can smash this glass. And below. You've got your grill. You may want to remove your grill pan when traveling or wrap it up as this can cause some noise when on the road and then below you've got your oven. Like so. Underneath you'll find storage But you pots and pans and your bigger items and then if you push the button in on all the locks and lock the doors go storage underneath your sink pull out drawers so three pull out drawers large storage cut through drawer And this is just showing that your water pump's working. You've got hot and cold water there, so it's getting up the temperature nicely. Above you've got storage. And then you've got a cooker hood with lights and extractor fan on there. So lights this one, extractor fan that one. Coming next to the kitchen, obviously you've got your Daewoo 800 watt microwave which only works on mains hookup, it's not a 12 volt microwave, you've got to be hooked up for this to work. And above you've got your wine glasses, plate racks and your drainer and some more cutlery storage, crockery storage. This little switch works the microwave, so if this isn't turned on, your microwave won't work. So that's just a f uh, switched fuse spur. And then below, to operate your Dometic styled fridge freezer, so you turn on here. Then you've got three sources. So you've got mains electric when hooked up, gas when you weren't hooked up in your wild camping, and then obviously battery works when the engine's running and it's designed to keep the fridge at the temperature it was before departing so it basically turns it into a big cool box so what you do is you'd either put on gas or electric first to chill it down and then turn it on to battery after it's chilled to keep the temperature the same when traveling from site to site or from home to your site temperature here so a lot of people say don't have it on five because Five's good for chilling it down, but then when you put your shopping in, it can potentially freeze your shopping, so turn it down to three or four. And then inside, you put your freezer box, storage, and then what you want to do is, when you're bedding the van down, not using it, you'll want to drain, clean, and remove all your items from your fridge. Obviously clean it out, and then if on the light, there's a little toggle, push slide the two toggles forward and what that does is it stops the door from locking on itself and you can get air circulation in and out of the fridge to stop any mold and bacteria forming in the fridge freezer in the washroom area so to operate the toilet ensure the pumps on you be able to push the blue button at the back which gives you your flush from your reservoir so you get your pink liquid and then what you'll want to do is always flush before use then this little grey lever slide to the right drops it into the cassette use the toilet with the blade open then flush after use and then slide this grey lever back to the right which shuts the cassette and will allow you to pull the cassette out from the outside should it need to be changed as it's full which is where this person will light up on the back of the toilet you get a red light there to see that it's full. 
all your little lights are individually switched so your big lights one there one there one here one here they're all got little rocker switches on to turn them on and off individually and what you can do is when showering you can pull this unit forward which obviously covers the toilet so if you're using the toilet that's got to be pushed back gives you a separate shower cubicle you've got a turnbuckle there and two on here to release the shower door and then what you do is put one on here and then there you have your own little shower cubicle and when winterizing if you remove your shower head from your hose, leave all your mixer taps throughout the vehicle open and allow the shower hose to lie in the shower tray. As you can see there, it's got quite a loop in there. Any water could potentially coil up in here, potentially freeze. So that's why you'd remove it and lie it down and then any water will just dribble out into the waste tank, which would be open from outside anyway. To operate your heating in hot water, above your forward facing back bench seats, in your dinette area, you've got your Truma digital control panel. So to turn on and off, you just press and hold, and then enter the menu, press again, and you've got the motor home with the thermometer in the top left-hand corner. So this is the temperature of the vehicle, you're having it all the way off. You can have it all the way to 30 degrees. Once you're happy, if you just press this button here, and it'll save the, th the thermostat to that temperature. But as it's so warm, we'll not have the heating on today. Moving along you put your water, so this is, if you've got no water in the tank, don't have any water on because it's like boiling a kettle with no water in. So you've got on 40 degrees which you'd normally use to shower, 60 degrees which you'd normally use to do your dishes. And then you can have it on boost which will turn off the heat and prioritise the water first. So for this we'll just say 60 degrees and again you would just push enter. And then moving slightly on, you've got which energy source so gas on its own if you're well camping and weren't hooked up mixture of one kilowatt and gas mixture of two kilowatts and gas you'd use this in the winter more as it's both sources together will reduce the time it takes to heat the water or the or the vehicle on mixture two and obviously once you've got the once you've got everything at temperature if you're on a site which you will be because you've got mains hook up in this you'll turn back onto electric which I'll come on to in a moment You've got electric on one kilowatt depending on what site current through the hookah bleed is, so amperage. And then electric on two, which you could use in more sites throughout the UK. Electric on one is on small SEL sites abroad. So electric on two is two kilowatts of electric. If you've paid your site fees, you'll not want to waste your gas. Then moving slightly on, you've got your fan in the top right hand corner, so you can have it on off or on depending if you've got the heating on so if I just slightly put the heating on there for you and then you have it on eco or high so eco will save a bit of 12 volt and high and you'd use eco on a night high you can hear the fans running so you wouldn't have this on a night because it would disturb your sleep so high during the day and um, it takes a bigger feed of 12 volt and obviously eco if you're well camping and on an evening Moving to the bottom corner, you put a timer so you can time the heat to come on and off, just the one so. You've got the display time on the panel. And then should you get a warning triangle in the middle, you've got a spanner in the bottom right hand corner. And go to reset, press enter, save preset and press again and then it will reset the panel and you'll have to go in and set everything up again. To make the bed up, what you'd simply do is lift and slide the lat system on both sides into each other like so. Slide this one out and into the middle to there and then use the backrest so you'd use this one. into here and 
and then you'd use that one into there and then above the cab you'll find two infill cushions so there's two in there and I'll pop them in if the space where they need to be and I'll come back and show you and there you have your large double bed made up so backrest from along here backrest there from along there and the two infill cushions which can be found above the looting area so the shorter one of the two goes here the longer one of the two goes there and what I'd also advise is turning all the cushions upside down and get this nicer flatter surface to sleep on and it's far more comfortable to open your windows you just press the levers lift all four up push out you hear it ratchet so it keeps the window open push it all the way out and bring it back in obviously make sure all your skylights and windows are securely locked before you travel you can't have them open when traveling and you've got a black fly screen and a blackout blind and to depart the two there's a little catch here so just clip and you'll retract back into the space so now in the car which is based on a mercedes sprinter so to black the windows out so you've got two blinds on the door like so and the same on the passenger side as well and on the door you've got your electric windows and your mirror adjustments so right and left your gas indication levels here so as it's got a LPG gas tank on which is 25 litres it'll tell you how full it is you've got your lights and headlight adjustment and to black the windscreen out lift one up push one down releases the window and then you, you will have to just pull the mirror out to get behind it like so and do the same one up one down to slide out and that is them shut so they're just magnetic so if it's going to be a windy night you can put something round there and obviously store away one up one down make sure they're stored away securely before you do start traveling and then coming on the controls so as it's a mercedes everything's on the left hand side so you've got a speed limiter Got your wipers and your indicators automatic transmission so park reverse neutral and drive and then you go plus and minus for your gears so you can go up the gears there should you want to be in manual mode cup holders and 12 volt point hazards ASR off is another word for turning your traction control off so anti-slip relief and that locks the doors including the habitation door you've got your temperature so how hot you want the cab to be and obviously your fan speed here so, so full or half and then your aircon button underneath the aircon button you've got the recirculation button which obviously recirculates the air that's already within the vehicle so, and then you've got your distribution so where you want it to go to and you've got so that's your heated mirrors there and then you've got your paper clip for holding a map or anything else in there you've got your head unit so it's fm and am radio and you press one to nine to save your favorite radio stations you can put an SD card in for media. So media is the memory card which is here. So it's, a, so it's an SD card to put your tracks on. You've got Bluetooth, so to connect to Bluetooth, go to tell, telephone, OK. Bluetooth telephones, update, and you want to search for them on your device. Once you find it, press pair, and then it'll ask you if you want to sync your contacts, just press allow 
and that'll find all your contacts within your phone book. And skip your tracks here and you've got answer and decline the call and a little handy storage space on and off volume just uh, get your volume so your radio thing. works lockable glove box and to lock your glove box you just use your key so with the key the key is obviously a Mercedes key so as soon as you put it in here it'll make a noise because it recognises the key should the battery ever go flat and you want to be into the vehicle on the key itself if you just slide the top along lift this out this is obviously your blade so this will get you in the doors and it will lock your glove box should you be wanting to store something in there So when you go, when you start the engine, you go into reverse, your reverse camera will come on. So there's a closer look at the reverse camera, so you've got the red lines obviously meaning the bumper and then the green showing the distance. And that's only in reverse, it doesn't work when in drive, so it's just a rear view camera. To turn the seats from the cab, you just use these red levers and then pull the seat forward should you get stuck on the door pillow or the door and turn round into the living space. And then of course, you do have your handbrake down here. So I would advise, it is an automatic, you don't have to use a handbrake, but I would still advise that you use it sometimes because obviously the parts, don't you don't want the parts to seize up and then take it for an MOT or a service and be billed for a handbrake cable as your handbrake is not working so just put it on from time to time to allow the system to work.